YouTube! In today's video, we are one month and some change later with the Galaxy Z Fold 5. And I have to admit, I have a confession. I've been enjoying this bad boy. I took it on a trip with me recently and used it exclusively on that trip. You know what I mean? Locked in and it delivered in so many ways. This is a great mature version of the Z Fold. The Z Fold 5 is showing the Z Fold's maturity. I mean, it should, right? It's the fifth iteration. <laughs> and to be honest, if I'm just being real and straight up, this is the best foldable device by default, especially here in the States. Should I explain that? I'll get more into it in just a second. Let's go over what has made this such an enjoyable use case over this last month and some change, as well as some of the cons with the Z Fold 5. Typically with these reviews, I like to get straight to it, get to the meat as to what some of the cons could be. First and foremost, if you're a heavy user and you need crazy battery life, understand this about this device. The outer uh, OLED panel is probably gonna force you to use this one more. And this is the main panel. And this thing is large, it's massive, and it has a massive brightness packed with it. So you can pull on battery a lot. You're not gonna get S23 Ultra battery out of this bad boy, but there has been some good improvements in battery life, which we'll get into in the battery section from the previous models. Another con is this is a foldable device. This is not your typical device. It is thick. She got some thickness to her. You know what I mean? And uh, considering that it's folding down and it's almost like two phones in one uh, for your pocketability and just overall lugging it around, it could be a hassle to some people. So just consider that. That's one of the cons. It's not like a true con, but it's a con to consider for some. Another con on this bad boy is camera hardware. Now, I will admit, we're gonna get into the camera section. I've been impressed with the Z Fold 5 camera processing. There's still some things to go, but I would just like, considering that this is the most expensive device that we purchased from Samsung, I would just like the most expensive camera hardware. Samsung, <laughs> you know? And that's just something that I'm, I, I'm being petty right now. I'm finna have petty cons because there aren't really many negatives with the Z Fold 5, but I'm gonna be petty. You feel me? I'm gonna push for us to get the best of the best. <laughs> hey, a closed mouth doesn't get fed, right? You gotta ask. Another one that has been on this device considering the fact that the design has only changed very little to none is the front display narrowness. This is gonna impact you in more ways than one. Not only is it how narrow it is for typing and things like that, but also how narrow it is for the aspect ratio for consuming content and so forth. So if you're watching like 16 by nine video, matter of fact, I just was outside and uh, I took some video, right? And this is 16 by nine. You guys can see a lot of bars on the left to right. So that could also be eliminated with a new redesign and a shorter, you know, Z Fold 5. We'll talk about that. Uh, it's up for debate because a lot of people, I paid attention. In my last video, I asked you guys, are you team wider, shorter, or are you team narrow, like the way that it is? And it was a lot of people going, uh, uh, what side won? I'll let you know when we have a discussion probably towards the end in that area of uh, user experience and so forth. So there aren't really a ton of cons with the Z Fold 5. It's a foldable device. If you accept the foldable life, then you know, there isn't much to complain about when it comes to this. But there are some things that people wanna see and they're pushing for it, and I'm, I'm all about. Oh, another con. The S Pen is not built in, meaning you have to either get a case which adds bulk and weight to carry a S Pen or you just gotta carry it separately from this device. The S Pen is chunky, boom, this is the Fold Edition S Pen. And it's, you know, it, in order to carry it, there's a case that adds all this chunk. I don't like cases on my devices. Uh, generally, I, I'll use them without a case, so that's another con. The S Pen is just carried separately or within a bulky case. I don't like that. Now, with all of that being said, let's get into what has made the Z Fold 5 such a pleasant experience over this month and some change. You gotta keep adding in the change because it's longer than a month I've been using this bad boy. Design. This year, new design, new hinge. Look at that hinge. That hinge is confident. Confidence in the hinge. There's nothing more confident yielding with a foldable device and giving you a beautiful hinge. Gotta love this hinge right here. Not only is the hinge dope, like as you guys see, I got the Samsung.com exclusive, which came with these matte black aluminum siding. It's a little bit more muted. It's not shiny and glossy and fingerprint yielding. So this is a clutch right here. This is so 
Nice. I mean, I'm in love with this design right here. On the Z Flip, I did the same thing, got the Samsung exclusive. Fingerprints who? Fingerprints where? <laughs> Nowhere to be found, gotta love it. And then that leads us to the outer panel right here. Now, the outer panel, again, I want it shorter, wider, or wider. It is what it is. Let's be real, I typically am forced to go here with it, to this beautiful inner main OLED panel. Both of these panels are, are beautiful though. I gotta give props. Let me go back to the outer display. Let me not just glaze over it like that because this thing has a great brightness. You can see it outside in direct sunlight as well as it's sharp. It has great PPI, great resolution. It's a beautiful outer OLED panel. It's just the size that's a little off-putting for me. But outside of that, I go into an even more beautiful OLED panel that has ideal resolution, ideal brightness, ideal use cases. So using this thing outside in direct sunlight, no issues at all. It's a pleasant user experience by far, and I love and enjoy it. Now, uh, a way to fix the aspect ratio is just to flip it this way, because this is the aspect ratio that I actually want for the uh, Z Fold 5, and I want it to fold like this. But until then, I guess I could kind of turn it this way and use it like this. At least you have the options. And the software that's being implemented Let's get into platform, the software, One UI 5.1.1.1, .1 whatever that's coming, it's the Fold Edition, baby. This thing is smooth, this thing is beautiful. Now, I'll admit, I'm a uh, Nova Launcher user over One UI, but have used it in the One UI configuration, and it's nice, it's clean. It's very close to like that pixel-ish, pixel launcher type of experience with more features. More junk in the trunk, basically. But I like Nova Launcher because I could strip it down a little bit more and I could get uh, my setup that I like. I like a lot of icons and also like these hidden ones right there. See, you didn't even know that was a hidden folder. You didn't know that was a folder. That's why I like Nova Launcher. But uh, the platform, the One UI, the latest Android that's running on this bad boy, everything is smooth as butter. And a big reason is due to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that's coming in here. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 brought the optimization and extended battery life. We're going to get into that in a second. It gave us the experience that we needed on this Z Fold device in order to take it to the next level. Now, Z Fold 4 users, hold your horses, relax. Don't make any rash decisions. If this wasn't your upgrade cycle, if you ain't got the budget, just chill, take it easy. I know, I'm amped about this bad boy and I'm talking it up. It's the nice one, it's the one. But don't uh, jump ship and make any rash decisions outside of your budget and you know your plan. Stick to your plan. But this thing with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, Performance is there by far, and another thing, optimization and efficiency. This is what's gonna lead us into the battery conversation. Yes, it's the same old 4,400 milliamp hour battery, but it has Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And what does that do, CJ? Let's get realistic about battery life. I lured to it earlier as it could be a con to heavy users, but here's the reality. With the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, if you're coming from the Z Fold 4, last year's model, we got an increase of up to an hour and a half to two hours more of overall usage on this bad boy. Thank you, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. That extends the Z Fold 5's battery life into better territory, into more usable, more general, more familiar territory when it comes to battery life. But the gap has been extended. Why is that? Because of this, the S23 Ultra is God tier battery. 5,000 milliamp hours, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. You could sleep on it, not charge it, do whatever, and get away with it. This is that iPhone 13 Pro Max-ish type batteries title. But the Z Fold 5 is benefiting from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2's optimization. It is getting improved and extended battery life versus the previous. But remember, like I said earlier, this is the main OLED panel that you're gonna use the most, and this is the brightest and largest OLED panel on any phone, basically, in general. Let, let, let's keep it real. Now I know, other markets, other worlds, things are getting bigger, things are getting thinner, things are getting lighter. I'm just in the States, so I gotta talk about what I got. So this bad boy right here is seeing an improvement in battery life, as well as, let me go back here on the design. I know I skipped ahead. It's so light and refreshing. Now, it's not a huge 
uh, weight reduction in comparison to like the Z Fold 4 if you're coming from that. But if you're coming from an older Z Fold, like the Z Fold 3 or 2 or something like that, oh, you're gonna feel that weight reduction. And another place I feel it is in comparison to the Pixel Fold. Now the Pixel Fold has been bay in the foldables department. No, it doesn't have everything, but for some reason, this thing is just bay. But when I went on my trip, I left bay at bay. And I went all in on the Fold 5 and locked in and just enjoyed it for a ton of days as my primary and I love it. I love how light this thing is. I love this OLED panel. This thing is beautiful. This thing is bright. You whip this bad boy out, who not looking, man? Listen, man, the whole room getting <laughs> brighter and, and everything. But uh, all jokes aside, a great, great user experience. And before I get into user experience, which is the most experience, we got to talk about these right here, the cameras. I'm gonna take you guys outside and show you what these cameras can do because I'm slightly impressed and in areas, not so much, but you know how I go, me and Samsung with the cameras. If you don't know, you're gonna find out. Let's go talk about them. All right, so we're gonna kick it off with the front facing selfie camera in auto mode, but the beauty about the Fold 5, which is a W, man, I forgot my glasses, but I don't need them now. <laughs> but a great fact about the Fold 5, the selfie camera, is you can actually use pro video mode. I'm about to switch to that right now, so we're gonna switch it up and see if you guys notice any difference. Okay, so now I'm in pro video mode. The only thing I'm not a fan of is having a crank shutter, but you have to because we don't have ND filters. Speaking of ND filters, I got some coming for the S23 Ultra. I'm gonna show you in the upcoming video on that. But this is about the Fold 5, so this is front-facing camera and pro video mode. Now let's get into those beautiful rear-facing cameras. Whoo, so we got the main wide angle and auto mode rear-facing camera. These are the cameras that you're going to use, but the beauty about the Z Fold 5 is I can see myself while I shoot myself, so that's a W. The sun is going in and out from under clouds, so that's a great test as to, the testament as to whether these uh, cameras are good or not, because this is great conditions to complicate it and so forth, so let me switch it to the ultra wide in regular mode and then I'll come back for pro video mode on the rear video camera so let's check this out <laughs> well I didn't have to go anywhere I just tapped on uh, ultra wide now you guys see me in the ultra wide goodness on this uh, rear facing camera now there's another camera back here there's the 3x zoom I don't know if I want to do that hold on let's tap it hold on let's see all right 3x zoom you all up in my grill backup player <laughs> but you can see the quality that you're getting with that and then now I, I gotta do pro video mode give me a second all right so there you have it pro video mode settings I hate that I have to crank my shutter my shutter speed is at like what one one thousandth right now with the ISO f50 so all that artificial added uh you know oh man it's about to overexpose because the sun just came out crazy so the only thing about the shutter speed being cranked in pro video mode just to compensate for not having an ND filter is you get kind of like shaky jittery movements when you move because the shutter speed is it's just crazy right now. So that's the only downside to it, but you get better quality and control, but it's more complication. So nevertheless, I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. This is bright sun, which is gonna be a challenge because we don't have an ND filter. Yeah. Boom. Okay, you guys just saw what these cameras can do, especially when you flip it into pro video mode and pro camera mode. If you know how to uh, manipulate camera settings, I shouldn't say manipulate, if you know how to use proper camera settings such as white balance, ISO, shutter speed, and things like that, then you can get great results, especially out of the pro camera and pro video mode. Now the pro video mode can only go so far because we don't have ND filters, which is what's needed. But I have a segment coming up really soon with the uh, S23 Ultra, which is gonna show you guys what ND filters do. Just wait for that, it's coming. Now, cameras. What I will say, I haven't looked at today's footage just, just yet, but when I did the S23 Ultra versus the Z Fold 5 camera test, I was highly, highly impressed with the Z Fold's camera image processing. And why do I gotta say image processing? It's because this has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and it has uh, this year a uh, GPU within it, which adds to the image processing. The hardware and the chips are what process the image. So in that right, we have received an improved image processing. But I gotta be real, in auto camera mode, I am just not the fan. You know, I showed you guys auto camera mode, and then I showed you guys 
pro video mode. In some instances, auto camera mode does all of the right settings. And in other instances, not so much. So you guys are gonna see, put them up there. You guys can be the judge, let me know. But I am impressed with the Z Fold 5 camera image processing. Why do I only talk about image processing? Because I still want better camera hardware. Now we did get some improvements. I can use pro video mode on the selfie camera, which is a W, but again, these. I want these inside of these. <laughs> yes, they're bigger. Yes, they're larger. Yes, they're gonna take up more room. Yes, the Z Fold 5 can get bigger to accommodate the larger camera, the larger uh, battery size, and the S Pen. Thank you, Samsung. <laughs> Just some suggestions, but nevertheless, the Z Fold 5 as it is, yields a great user experience. And that's our next topic. The most important topic is user experience. What is user experience, CJ? It's when you take all of the tech specs and you take everything that's advertised and you put it in real world usage as a collective and that's what yields user experience. And that's what you endure when you use this device. Like when I go here and I need to do something quick here and I need to type something, ah, it's kind of crammed for me, or my swipe typing isn't as accurate. That attributes or discourages the user experience. You know what I mean? If you get what I'm saying. Or, you know, I watch a 16 by nine out here and it's not so, ah. But in reality, in all fairness, this is the main display when you're using the Z Fold 5. This is where you're gonna be. So the whole point is for you to open this thing and use it like this. And in that right, it yields an awesome and a great user experience. I mean, everything, is larger on the Z Fold 5. And that's a W, so if I pull up X, which X sounds crazy, man. Twitter, bro, Twitter sounded so much more innocent, but everything is so much larger and just immersive on here. So you gotta love that, you gotta appreciate that. Watching videos and so forth, uh, 16 by nine, the aspect ratio is a little bit funky. Like if I go back to this video, you know, you flip it this way, you get a way better aspect ratio and viewing experience versus this way, which is the main way. This is what I'm talking about. See if, if Samsung would put it this way and fold it this way. Look at that. That is the experience. But you do have the option to flip it as you guys saw, as I did. So uh, I guess you eliminate that to a degree by just flipping it this way. But I don't want to say that because I want Samsung to change the form factor selfishly. I'm not saying that that's the way that it needs to be. But in general, the user experience on here is phenomenal. I'm an S Pen yielding freak right here. I love the S Pen. The only thing is I, you know, carrying it with the Z Fold 5, I, I didn't carry it when I went on my trip. I just went straight Z Fold 5. I had it with me. I had an S Pen with me. I didn't have that right S Pen, but you know, I didn't use it. So uh, I would if it was built in though. The user experience though, in general, with us getting a longer battery life, which is helping, you can use this thing throughout your uh, work day. The work day is what matters. Can you go to work and make it home and have battery? And if it goes beyond that to like, you know, into the night or if you, oh, you hit up work and then you about to slide and do a little function, even though, you know, you got to get up the next morning. If you can get through that, that's even more clutch. So it's just all going to depend on your usage, your apps, you know, what's draining it or not, you know, added accessories, which I think accessories add to the user experience of any Samsung device. So you add a Watch 6 Classic right here in 47 millimeter, you get those watch faces. I got a video teaching y'all how to do that. You know what I mean? You pull this out, you doing this. Man, 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 hey, somebody might be winning out on the function, if you know what I mean. But uh, all jokes aside, the Z Fold 5 is a great, phenomenal device. I'm so happy that Samsung has gotten the weight down to where it is. It can go more, but that's just pushing it. I mean, I like this weight right here. It's just feeling really good. It's feeling very much matured and it's feeling confident, especially in the hinge. And that's one of those things you gotta worry about with these devices is the hinge. The hinge is what reflects the dust. The hinge is what closes and folds this glass display. You know, it's gotten flat and seamless this year. The hinge is very important on a foldable device and to see it constantly improving for the better over the years. So I made a video with the Z Fold 3, Z Fold 4, Z Fold 5, and I went down the line using the hinges and you can feel the improvement and maturity in the hinge, which I think is a plus for the Z Fold 5. The battery has gotten better. The screens have gotten brighter. Uh, there's still uh, another con. I, I, I just bring this up last minute, being petty. They're still very much reflective and kind of plasticky. Uh, it doesn't affect the user experience, but I'm gonna point that out so you're not caught off guard if you choose to pick one up. And speaking of that, 
There's some fire deals going. I got some links with some exclusive deals. I think if you get a Z Fold 5 and you add in a Watch 6 Classic, you could get the Watch 6 Classic for $99, player. You know, hit the link below. It's, it's a temporary deal, but I'm giving you exclusive early access, and then it goes actually live uh, for another week. So actually, I'm giving y'all the hookup. I'm giving y'all time, too. And if you want to get a Z Flip uh, 5, you could get a $600 trade-in with that bad boy. So it's an enhanced trade-in. There's also an enhanced trade-in towards the S23 Ultra going on via the link down in the description below. I'm just trying to put y'all up on game. Get y'all, all right, I'm gonna stop uh, pushing stuff, but obviously my links is where you need to go. Uh, the subscribe button is definitely what you need to hit along with the bell and uh, road to 100K. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys. You guys been with me every step of the day. I'm gonna keep the content coming. I got you guys the Z. Fold 5 is a major W. It's a go. You can get it. I, I, I got to green light it. I do want those improvements, though, Samsung. I'm serious. But until then, it's the best. By default. By default, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. All right. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. It's understood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up, and I beat those eyes. It's understood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm good. Wake up, and I do my part. Wake up, and I do my job. Just how I should. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. It's understood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up, and I beat those eyes. It's understood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm